A while ago, I was watching an interview um, with Stephen Hawking on the uh, on a news program, and I was kind of annoyed um, by this interview because uh, Stephen Hawking was saying that uh, uh, science uh, is very successful. It uh, answers a lot of questions for us. It's very helpful. Uh, but we don't really need um, the the other approach, or uh, another approach, namely that of of religion. Um, just 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 kind of saying that uh, science is superior to religion; it it works. Religion doesn't, uh, and that kind of thing. Well. Um, I, I was kind of annoyed because uh, this kind of view um, it, it seems to ignore the fact that um, science is is kind of based on uh, uh, science is based on religion in, in a sense, um, but. At, at any rate, uh, I've recently heard, I've been hearing more and more about this uh, new book that Hawking has, has written. Uh, it came out uh, just a few days ago called The Grand Design. And I haven't read the book yet. Um, I do hope to read it uh, at some point, but um, I haven't read it yet. So I, I don't want to uh, speak too dogmatically uh, in my condemnation of the book without having it actually read it, uh, but I figured I should say something about it. Um, and the uh, point that I, I kind of wanted to to make um, was, uh, and I'm very tentative here because, again, I haven't read it, uh, but uh, it, it seems to be uh, uh, saying, perhaps among other things, that uh, uh, we, we don't need God to explain uh, the world, uh, the world beginning to exist, and, and uh, we can use science to do that, and, and so on. Uh, so it, it's kind of different, uh, perhaps, than what Hawking has said before. Um, he, uh, as I understood it uh, uh, from years ago, uh, he was uh, some kind of a deist, or, or at least leaning towards deism. Uh, he, he was kind of seeking spiritually, attending church, and so on, and kind of heading in the direction of uh, some type of a believer in God, uh, without actually having reached that point. Uh, but now it seems uh, he is um, kind of a full-blown uh, um, unbeliever, and... Um, uh, uh, not really seeking any longer. He uh, kind of a, a confirmed atheist. So the the uh, I, I pulled up the uh, Wikipedia article on the book, The Grand Design, and <clears throat> it says it's a popular science book, uh, and it's also authored uh, co-authored by Leonard Mlodinow, Now I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so the the thing uh, that always kind of worries me about popular science is that it, it's kind of dumbing down things, uh, oversimplifying them, uh, which is is kind of a misleading. If if you don't understand the the more precise, uh, more technical science behind the pop science, uh, it's easy to misunderstand um, uh, popular science. Uh, which is one of the reasons why uh, people uh, in newspapers and on news programs uh, normally uh, tend to kind of misrepresent, uh, not necessarily intentionally, but kind of misrepresent science and they're oversimplifying it uh, so that uh, a larger audience can understand it. So uh, that's a problem that uh, should be kept in mind uh, with popular science. Um, now, they, it says here in the Wikipedia article, um, 
The authors of the book point out that a unified field theory may not exist. Albert Einstein and other physicists had proposed such a theory based on an early model of the universe containing three dimensions in time. Since then, the model of the universe has changed significantly and is now believed that the universe has 10 or even 11 dimensions. And then in parentheses it says M theory, uh, which uh, is, you know, the six different uh, M theories, the six different uh, string theories, uh, which are all mathematically equivalent. Uh, published in the United States on September 7, 2010, the book became the number one bestseller on Amazon.com just a few days after publication. The book was published in the United Kingdom on September 9, 2010 and became the number two bestseller on Amazon.co.uk the same day. Uh, let's see here. Alrighty here. I'm, I'm trying to get to the uh, more significant parts of the um, of the article. Uh, it says uh, under synopsis, in the culmination of the book, the authors explain how the theory of quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity together help us understand how universes could have come out of, uh, could have formed out of nothing. Well, uh, there's a problem right there because we're, we're, we're invoking two things, quantum mechanics and uh, relativity, uh, to say that uh, universes are coming from no things. So, so two things are different from no things. Um, a thing is not, is not nothing. Um, so uh, qu uh, quantum mechanics is something, uh, in some sense, as is relativity. It's not absolutely nothing. Now, uh, in physics, um, sometimes uh, things are spoken of as nothing, which uh, in everyday language wouldn't really be nothing. Uh, but th that, that's one of the problems with popularizing science, with oversimplifying it. Um, uh, the, the, the fact that nothing isn't really nothing is kind of lost in the trans uh, lost in the translation. So. Uh, we we want to ask, or at least I want to ask, where is quantum mechanics and where is relativity coming from? Um, that is a part of the universe, uh, so it can't come, it, it can't create the universe if it's part of the universe. So I think that uh, we're still left with a need to invoke God to explain those two things, um, quantum, uh, quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity. All right, so the article, or the uh, article, I, I guess, in Wikipedia, it goes on, uh, it says, Hawking writes, quote, because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason there is something rather than nothing, why the universe exists, why we exist. It is not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going, unquote. So that's, uh, uh, he, he used the phrase uh, to light the touch paper in the brief history of time as well. Uh, now he's, he, there he was saying perhaps God is necessary for that. Now he's saying God is not necessary for that. Well, again, what is gravity? Gravity is a, is a uh, component. It's something as opposed to nothing uh, within the universe. It's an aspect. It's a part in some sense of the universe. So, uh, we have to have a universe for gravity to operate in, in order uh, for it to cause things. So, uh, gravity is not nothing, it's something. Where does this something come from? It can only come from God. Uh, it, it can't come from the universe that doesn't exist yet. Uh, it could come perhaps from a multiverse, but then where does that come from? It, it can only come from God. Um, the, 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 there's no other options. Uh, you have the natural, 
And then if there's anything else, which apparently there is, uh, to, to bring in the natural uh, into being, it can only be supernatural. Um, Alright, then uh, they talk about the multiverse, which um, it is, is I, I, I don't understand the appeal of the multiverse. Um, the, the multiverse, it, it's a hypothesis. It, it's not something that's been proven. Uh, people uh, uh, just refuse to accept the fact that, that there is a God. They want to do whatever they can, whatever kind of ad hoc, lame uh, uh, excuses to rationalize away the fact that there is a God. So they, 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 they suppose, they posit, without any, well, I shouldn't say without any proof, but without sufficient uh, reason to say for sure, uh, that they, they suppose there is a multiverse. Um, um, but uh, th th there, there really isn't any reason sufficiently to suppose that there is, that there is a multiverse. So <clears throat> I, I, I think, and, and, and we can also ask the question, where does the multiverse come from? It comes from God. It, it, the, the, there's no getting around this. Um, the, 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 the new multiverse is kind of the same as, as the old uh, universe. So I don't get it. I do not, I do not understand this. Um, so one, we don't really have a, a reason to suppose there is a multiverse, uh, a good reason. And two, even if there is a multiverse, it still doesn't explain away God, because God's necessary to create the multiverse. Um, and and then uh, the, it talks about the the anthropic principle, and, and it always amazes me when when people will invoke uh, when arguing against the existence of God, they'll invoke the anthropic principle. Uh, the, the, the anthropic principle points to God. God is the one who made the world in such a way that it is um, finely tuned, if you will. He's the fine tuner, the intelligent designer to, to make the world hospitable to life. Uh, th th that points inescapably uh, to the intelligent, fine tuning design of a supernatural divine being. Uh, so, so why would an atheist appeal to this uh, to argue against the existence of God? It, it, it doesn't uh, make any sense to me. Uh, but uh, I'm already over 10 minutes, almost out of time. I'll have to continue this in another video. Thank you.